meeting is being recorded. All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Bonnie Therian. I'm the interim town manager here in Wethersfield. And I just wanna quickly introduce everyone uh, so that you know who we're talking to. Um, so Diane McAdams is a realtor and she'll be a part of our fair rent committee. Lindsay Jones is a tenant. Um, Sue Grady is our citizen representative and um, Tony Homicki, Anthony Homicki is representing a landlord. And then attorney Ken Slater is the town attorney who's assisting us tonight. And could each of you just introduce yourself quickly? Uh, my name is Zai Bayon. I am the tenant. Thank you. Uh, my name is Dennis Dalmagas. I'm the property manager for Polybrook. Thank you for, both for coming. Um, basically, what we have to do first as an order of business is there must be a vote and an election for a chairman to run the meeting. So from the commission members, I will take nominations for the chairperson. I nominate Diane McMad McAdams. And I'll second that nomination. Thank you, Diane. Yes, thank right. you, Diane. Tony, second. Any other yeah. nominations? Yeah. All right, nominations are closed. I'll have a vote. All those in favor of Diane McAdams as chair, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Madam Chair, you are in charge. All right. Um, at, at this time, I will um, introduce the uh, attendant, Zaib Ayan. And did I say that right? Yes, ma'am. And, and we'll let you go ahead and, and discuss what. Oh, wait a minute. No, no. first, I, Susan yes. was going to read your letter. I'm sorry. We're going to have Susan Grady read what you sent in to the town, okay? Yes, it's dated November 5th, 2021 <clears throat> to Bonnie and Fair Rent Commission. To the members of the Fair Rent Commission and Bonnie Therian, I am writing this message because I am having issues with my new landlord. My old landlord who refused for some reason to offer me a new lease, sold my apartment building to a new landlord and now I see why he refused to renew my lease. For the past six years, I have lived at 128 Follybrook Boulevard, apartment four, and my rent was $1,030 a month. After my apartment building was sold, I attempted to contact the new landlord to see if there would be any changes, but no response, to me at least. However, I did ask my neighbors whose buildings were also sold if they were able to get in contact with the new landlord. And if they did, what was said and the response was that the new landlords plan to charge all current residents $1,200 a month and all new tenants coming in $1,400. I still tried to get in contact with the landlord to confirm the situation with the rent and finally was able to get through to someone, but they were unable to answer my questions and told me they would look into it and get back to me. I did not hear back from them after that. After a month with no new lease, I messaged them again and was told I should be receiving a new lease soon by the end of the month. The new lease did arrive and I was surprised to see that they had raised the rent from $1,030 of what I was previously paying to $1,400, a $370 increase. When I called to see if we could negotiate a lower price, I heard no response. And when I finally got through to the property manager, he told me he would look into it and get back to me. Avoiding the conversation about the rent, this has been going, still been going on. It has now been three months. The last conversation I was able to have with the property manager, I was finally able to have a five minute conversation with them <clears throat> and was finally, was able to finally express my concerns. The apartment I live in was never upgraded or renovated by the previous landlord, even before we moved in. The pipes are rusting, the doorways need to be replaced, the flooring needs to be replaced, the bathtub needs to be replaced, it is rusting, the blinds need to be replaced, the walls need to be repainted, and we live next to a lady 
who has a mental illness and is a constant disruption. All the issues with the apartment, I believe, if they were fixed, would warrant $1,400 a month. And the property manager expressed the same sentiment. But nothing has been done to resolve those issues. It has been very difficult to deal with this new landlord, and I am need, in need of assistance. I would like to know if it is fair for them to charge us $370 more a month with no new updates or renovations to the apartment and no new amenities. The lack of communication and avoidance on, this, on their part has made this very difficult. The communication is also lacking when it concerns maintenance calls and responding to issues with the apartment as well as short notices for inspections of the apartment. And they don't actually inspect what they say they are coming to look at and check with the apartment. And no notice was given when they shut the hot water off for a day and a half. This message is to file a formal complaint on my new landlord, Empire Realty USA Corporation. Please get back to me as soon as you can. And I would love to meet, if possible, discuss my situation in further detail. Thank you for your time. Regards. That's it. Madam Chair, could could uh, I have the floor for a moment? This is Ken Slater. Yes, Ken Slater, you have the floor. I was just going to uh, take the, a quick opportunity just to explain to the parties uh, the, the next step in the procedure. The complaint was just read into the record um, and the complainant will have the first opportunity to be heard. I'll swear him in and I'll also ask him to, to swear under oath that the statements contained in the complaint are true. So that if he does so, then, then those allegations should, could be considered a, as evidence that he, he is stated under oath. Uh, he'll have an opportunity to present evidence, uh, anything that he wants to add to the complaint. If he swears that the allegations of the complaint are true, then those allegations can be considered by the commission as having been submitted under oath. He can add uh, as much or as little uh, as he wishes. And after he, he makes any statements, he can be questioned by the commission. Uh, and, they, and after that, uh, any other witnesses he might have would be handled in the same way. I'm, I'm guessing that there aren't other witnesses. It's just going to be the tenant and the landlord. When he finishes uh, the landlord, uh, we'll have our landlord representative, we'll have an opportunity, we'll again be placed under oath, we'll have an opportunity to present evidence to the commission. Uh, and same same process, you'll be able to ask uh, the, the uh, questions of, uh, of the landlord. Um, the complainant would have a final opportunity uh, to, to some, you know, have any, any comment in response uh, because he is the complainant. Um, and if there's no other evidence that uh, either side has, the commission can close the public hearing. Once the public hearing is closed, you won't hear any more information um, from either party. Um, if for some reason during the course of the process, the commission decides that there's additional information that's necessary, that's not available tonight, and asks one of the parties to present it, the commission does have the, the discretion to be able to keep the hearing open and can continue it to another day. Uh, but once the hearing is closed, the, the proceeding uh, that the, the landlord and the tenant need not remain as part of the meeting, but they're entitled to continue to watch, but they can't participate. Uh, and the commission will then deliberate uh, based on the, the, the 13 criteria that are in the, uh, the ordinance, as well as the state statute. Uh, and then a decision will be rendered and, and formal notice will be issued from the, the interim town manager's office to, uh, to both the complainant and the respondent. Um, and I would just ask before turning it back to you, Madam Chair, whether the, the complainant or respondent have any questions uh, regarding that procedure. Right. Hearing none, I will turn it back over to you, Madam Chair. All right. I think, uh, our first uh, question will be with um, Zaib, and if he wants to go ahead and have a, you know, tell us his uh, case, um, we'll be happy to hear it. And then um, the 
the uh, commission, people on the commission will have a chance to ask you questions. Yes, he has to be sworn in, right? Yeah. Mr. Oh, yeah. Mr. Ione, can you raise your right hand? Yeah, he has to be sworn in. <laughs> uh, will you, do you swear that the information you provide tonight is true? Uh, swear or affirm the information to provide tonight is true under penalties of perjury? I do. Okay. And secondly, you heard, did you hear the complaint read right into the record this evening? I did. And do you also swear that the information that you provided in that complaint is also true under penalties of perjury? I do. All right. With that, you have the floor. I also wanted to say um, I actually do have some witnesses who could testify on my behalf here with me. They're not in view, but they are in the room. Um, I guess I'll start by saying um, this process has been very difficult because truthfully, we haven't been dealing with um, Empire Reality themselves, which I assume is still the, the, the owners of the property. Um, uh, we have gone through actually three different property managers, not specifically people, but three different property uh, managers in three different instances. So I, that's also part of the reason why it's been very difficult to deal with them. Um, just recently, we got Dennis back. I, I believe he was originally there, but he left for a time period and someone else took over for him. And then I had to deal with that gentleman. And then it was also a struggle. And then Dennis is now back and we have a brand new portal system and um, we're operating on something totally different than when we were originally operating on. Um, for me, um, there's a lot of issues wrong with the house or the apartment. I, besides the stuff that I stated in, in, the, in the email, um, there's some sanitation issues uh, with, as soon as you walk in through the front door, to even walk up the steps, same thing with the rear door to walk up the steps, you find there's a dust, dirt, and garbage everywhere that has not been cleaned up. Um, even the trash cans and the dumpsters, there's garbage laid out everywhere. Um, I have photo evidence of everything that I'm, I'm saying to you. Um, I'm not sure about how I could provide that to you at this moment, but I do have photo evidence of everything that I'm speaking of and video evidence. On top of that, um, inside the apartment alone, um, I did state that, you know, there's a lot of renovation that needs to be and updating needs to be done that hasn't been done. Um, on top of recently, I've been having that I did not state, I've been dealing with a mold issue inside the bathroom as well that has come up. That is something that I have not expressed to the property manager. That is something that has come up recently. I've, I've tried to deal with it myself, but it is something that has been ongoing even before um, Empire Reality took over. Uh, uh, what else? Um, I, I also took the liberty of, uh, of uh, um, getting a contractor to come to the apartment and uh, asked him to give me a quote of how much it would cost to fix everything and update the things that are currently in the apartment. He gave me a quote of around $10,000 to $11,000. So, you know, th with all that in mind, on top of the amenities that are not provided, um, I did my research into other apartment buildings and, and searched for other apartment buildings that have the same amount of bedrooms and, and saw what they offered for the prices that they, that they were charging. And, and majority of the time, Apartments they were going for $1,400 to $1,500 offered a lot more than what is being offered currently. So that is also part of my case. Um, we're, we're not being offered the same amount of stuff that the other places are offering if, it, if, we, if we're going off of the market and stuff like that. Um, you know, I just felt, especially when it came to the communication aspect, I've, I've called, I have phone records, I have emails uh, that I've called multiple times trying to speak to someone and I, I never really got through to anybody. And when I did get through to people, the, the conversations didn't last very long. And I was always, you know, told, because most of the time the conversations went, I need to speak to a manager. I finally got in contact with a property manager. And when they finally spoke to me, either through text or on the phone, the conversation, I never got a reply back or I never, the conversation ended with, can I call you back? And that call never came. So I found instances 
you know, down the line to, to, to try to communicate again. Hey, listen, you told me you're going to call me. Still haven't received a call back from you. And at a certain point, I got frustrated. Um, I've never dealt with something like this before. This is my first time. And I seeked out help. I contacted the uh, attorney general. I got his advice on how to handle this situation. And here we are now at the hearing. Um, I do have uh, people with me here who can testify who also were dealing with the same some of the same issues because um, they also live across the street in a, an apartment that was also purchased by Reality Empire. And um, even though they were able to have a different uh, different outcome than me, um, the, the struggles were, were still the same. Um, and, and I have other people who are not currently with me, other neighbors who have expressed their struggles as well with, with the property manager. And it's, it's truthfully been an ongoing issue, but I believe I'm the only one to my knowledge who has complained and, and brought it to, to where we are now. Um, I have a question. Sure. How, how many people live with you in your house, in your dwelling? It is me and my girlfriend. Currently. Is it a two bedroom? Yes. Okay. And what amenities were you asking about? What amenities were you thinking? Well, when I looked at other apartments that were charging uh, 1400 a month, they offered in, in house dryer and washer. Okay. They offered gyms. Um, they were in, on the property. They offered uh, sometimes even pools. Um, you know, things like that. They offer dog washing, uh, garage. Is that, is that in Weathersfield? That means to interrupt you. Is that in Weathersfield? It was in the Hartford County. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions for? Um, do you think some of these things like rusting floors and all that are up to code? I mean, I don't well, know much about the code myself, but if there's code violations, they should be remedied, I would think. I could tell you last time I had a complaint about my bathtub, I have a video of Russ spouting out from the from the drain. Um, they did send one to unclog this, the, the issue that was going on, but uh, I was told that the plumber, from the plumber, that uh, when he was looking into it that he has never seen that amount of rust inside the pipes before. And he, he I'm not sure if he expressed that to management, but uh, it has been an issue even before Reality Empire uh, had purchased the apartment, something that my previous landlord continuously put a Band-Aid over. Um, even though I was told that he fixed it, um, things still haven't been fixed. And uh, the rest that was is a consuming. That was a previous landlord just put a Band-Aid on it? Yeah, just put a Band-Aid on it, yeah. He would constantly send uh, his maintenance guy to uh, unclog it. But uh, whenever the maintenance guy came, he would express to me that these pipes need to be changed eventually. And uh, I guess that was a large project that uh, they didn't want to do. Pay for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have another question, if you don't mind. Sure. You, you indicated that now they have a portal, a communication type portal. Is yes. that, has that made it easier to communicate with the landlord with the landlord at all as of recently yes um, okay before you know we were just given an email and a phone number yeah and the portal was only used for maintenance requests okay gotcha. um, but uh, i can i can say that as of late communication has been a lot better but the fact that i've had to go through three different you know situations within this time frame, yeah, it's been very difficult. Um, I have a couple of questions. Oh, sorry. Um, I know you mentioned that there had been uh, issues when you would ask for maintenance done to the property. Can you tell us a little bit more about what those issues were, what the communication was, if people would call you back late, if you never heard from them? Yeah, um, I have an instance right here. I'll read through my text message. Uh, Uh, sorry, give me one moment. Uh, so um, after leaving a bunch of messages, I have a phone history. I called 10 times in one day 
uh, they when you call the number, it gives you three different choices. You know, that press one to get to you know management, press two to get to maintenance, press three, so on and so forth. So I constantly called that number when I was having an issue with my toilet, and uh, I left messages on that, but I never got any calls back. But eventually, I did get a text message back, and uh, it said, "Thanks, I'll." take a look when I get into the office. And then that was around 12, 12 PM. And then I, I didn't get anything back. I answered any word for maintenance for my toilet, question mark. Uh, we currently cannot use the toilet at all due to it leaking every time we would flush. Um, and then I just still didn't get a response. That was around 2.25 PM. And then um, I messaged again around 4.25 PM, two hours later saying, I'm Am I just going to be ignored again by apparently everyone associated with this organization? Maintenance won't answer my calls. Uh, I still have not heard from management. I've been waiting for almost four plus hours. Uh, where's the office located? Which is another thing. They didn't have an office that we can go to to go see anybody personally. Um, and then um, I got a message back saying, are you home? I can send a guy for the toilet now. That was around 1048 a.m. the next day. And I said, no, no one is home right now. And the toilet actually stopped leaking. So I ended up, you know, trying to fix it myself and I, I got it to stop leaking. Um, and um, afterwards, um, oh, I still, well, actually the toilet stopped leaking, um, but it was leaking at the time when I spoke to them and I asked them if they could still send one to, to check it out. But I, I was told, OK, he won't be around until late if it starts up again to let him know. And I told him we'll do. So there was some communication there. But in the end, I didn't really get to, to anybody to come check the toilet, if that makes sense. Um, and then I have yeah. an, I have another question just about, about maintenance. So sure, sure. I know you mentioned that they would kind of just spring inspections on you in your letter and then they wouldn't be, they wouldn't check the thing that they were saying that they were checking. When yes, yes. they come into your building and that you have a mold problem and you have door frames that need to be replaced, it seems like a lot of this stuff, the trash in the hallways um, and the dust, that that would just be visible to the naked eye by someone coming in to do an inspection. Is, was, did they ever remark on that, offer to bring somebody to fix it? Were the inspections ever related to the issues with your apartment? No, we only had one inspection that was uh, random, um, and it was a radon inspection. Radon. But I believe, I, I wasn't sure how that inspection goes, but I, um, all that happened was they showed up, they took pictures of the electrical box, then they took pictures of the light fixtures, and then they left. So I'm not sure what that is, if that, how a radon inspection goes. Um, and yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Chairman, I have some questions. Sure. Yes, go ahead. So you, how many bathrooms do you have? One bathroom. One bathroom. Utilities, do you pay for the heat and the uh, hot water? Heat and hot water is included. It's included. Is it gas fired? Do you know, or if it's oil fired? I believe it's electric. Okay. Uh, parking spaces. Do you have dedicated parking spaces for yourself? No dedicated. It's a uh, first come first serve for the area that we all share in the back. Has that been a problem at all? Enough room? No, has not been an issue. All the neighbors are very nice. The snow plowing has that been maintained in the past years, or any problems? Yes. No, snow plowing has been good. Um, we did have an ice issue recently. Um, everybody was caught by surprise by that ice weather that we had, I believe it was last week, Wednesday, where everybody was sliding around everywhere and those accidents. Um, yeah, I think, but, I think we've all, we all felt that one, boy. Uh, yeah, dishwasher, no. do, you have, do you have a dishwasher in your unit? No dishwasher. No, no, garbage, dis no garbage disposal. Garbage disposal. No, um, no ventilation over the how stove. About, how about a clothes washer and clothes dryer? That is found downstairs in the basement. There's four, there's two dryers, two washers that are shared among everybody who is connected within 
all the buildings of the basement. So the basements are a certain size and all the buildings that are connected through that one basement, everybody in those apartment buildings share those four, two washers and two dryers. Okay. And um, did you give a deposit when you rented the, the, the property, when you moved in? Uh, yes, a deposit was given. Was, was it a one month security deposit or more than that? I think it was a month and a half security deposit. Okay. And do they allow pets? Yes. Okay. I did also put down a, a one-time fee of $500 for my pets. Okay. Gotcha. And it was a one-year lease or did you have a multiple-year lease? It was a three-year lease. And when it was up, I spoke to my previous landlord about getting a new one. He completely ignored me. And then the property was sold. I went, I lived month to month until the property was sold. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Question. Go ahead, Susan. Uh, do you think this was, did you say the garbage was in the hallways and all over the place? Yes. Um, so do you consider that a hazard, a sanitary hazard and mold is supposed to be very dangerous to health so so you consider yeah, you can so you consider yes. these things dangerous i mean well i wouldn't consider I, the i wouldn't consider the garbage in the hallways because it's more like dirt from the outside people tracking in mud um there's a so who's, uh, are who's they supposed to clean are they supposed to clean the hallways and keep up the hallways Yes, I believe so. I um I know that was something that was done by the previous landlord, and I believe that was technically included in the new lease that they provided for us, if I'm not mistaken. And how is the mold presented a problem to your health or anything? Not that I know of, but it is spreading throughout the bathroom. It started off in the windowsill, and it began spreading on the ceilings and the corners, and it's making its way towards the door, the doorway. Well... I think that needs to be addressed. That's my personal opinion. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Um, do you, does anybody else have any more questions for uh, Zaib? For the record, is it worthwhile having the other people with him to uh, state their names and maybe tell us what units they're in? Yeah, I was going to go in that direction next and see if his, uh, Witnesses wanted to step forward, and then um, a, Attorney Slater would probably swear them in. Or I guess he will. <laughs> sure. Are we ready for that? Are we ready for that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Both of you, come on. At the same time. Actually, it should be one at a time, Mr. I can swear them both. I can swear them both at once, though, but you can get their names, but they should speak one at a time. Okay. Yeah, that yeah, that saved time. A minute, <laughs> A minute. <laughs> and and uh, starting on the, with with the the, the uh, could you both state your name uh, and uh, address for the record? Yes, my name is Shevani Stodd. I'm a tenant at one twenty three Folly Brook. I'm Amira Zayan, and I am a tenant at one twenty three Folly Brook Apartment. Two. Okay, can you both raise your hands and right hand? And do you both swear that any testimony you provide tonight? Uh, you swear or affirm is true under penalties of perjury. Yes. yes. Thank you. And then one at a time, uh, whatever testimony uh, you'd like to present on, on behalf of the uh, complainant. Okay. So um, in regards to, um, I'll speak on the difficultiness of um, trying to reach out. Could you to speak you. up a little louder, a little, maybe get closer? And so, state, in, could you state your name once again, just so I, we can jot it down and we have it. Okay, we, uh, Amer, Amaris, A-M-A-R-I-S, last name, yeah, Ayon, A-Y-O-N. Okay, are you okay. related to him? No? I'm his, I'm his sister. Okay. <laughs> okay. I just saw, I recognize the last name, that's all. <laughs> yes, so okay. I... I I used to live with him in the 128 Follybrook, and then I eventually moved to the 123. Mm -hmm. um, so I was there for about five of the years with him. Um, 
I'm, I have had also a similar experience in regards to reaching out to the landlords. Um, we were, um, we were told that we needed to note, needed to reach out and make the arrangements when the property was sold by the end of May, coming into June 15th. Um, I did reach out to them by email and I did reach out to, I did call the numbers that they were given to discuss, you know, what the changes were because we were just notified via um, mail um, that the property was sold. So um, I wanted to know what that would look like and if we needed to prepare if there was going to be a change in, um, um, what is it called, in, in rent and um, what was going to be what was going to be the new procedure. Um, I had, I wrote several, um, several emails, did not get a response back, called several times, texted several times with the numbers they were given. Same thing, I would call, I would get somebody um, and then they would um, tell me that they were out of the office and then they will get back to me. I did eventually on two occasions did get a chance to speak to them and I expressed my concerns and that they said that they would go to their, um, to the owners of the, of the properties and have a discussion with them. But when they would come back for follow-up, they would not follow up and it would go by months. Um, so I'm speaking in behalf of that. Um, when you do, when you did, um, did do some maintenance calls um, and let them know of the of what was going on, it took a very long time for them to come or even address it. You would have to continuously be on top of them in order to get a response or to to get to get anything moving into the apartment. Um, so it was a constant back and forth, um, and very frustrating um, until we eventually were able to, me and my roommate, we were able to get able to get a hold of somebody, talk things through, and then we were able to finally get a, a lease sign after having a discussion with them um, with the understanding that of course, you know, if we ever moved out and decided to come back in, the rent will be as what they requested. So, um, and we've, me and my brother have been a part of Folly Brook for many times. We've lived in other apartment buildings in this establishment. And this happens to be the first time that we've ever had such a hard time, just even just communicating. And the sanitary as well. The uh, outside appearance, as well as what's been going on in the hallways, downstairs in the basements where the laundry laundry um, machines are. Um, they have like trash bags down there for we can put the lint that it looks like it hasn't been touched for months. Um, as well as sometimes even broken machines. And it smells downstairs. Um, behind the buildings right now we're, ha we're having um, issues with mice, which we never really did have before. Um, landscape was, um, was cut and, and, and kept up, up to par, no longer anymore. We were hearing uh, that we used to have security come and check out the cars um, and watch over for, for a period of time before the prior owners of now. And now we're hearing about tires being slashed and people breaking into the cars. So there's been, with the change in, in, in property, there has been some increase in stress. That's what I would speak on behalf of. Um, does anybody with the commission have any questions for Amaris? I have one question is if you could tell me how long you've, uh, your lease expired and how long have you been going month to month? So our lease had expired um, June 30th and then we were going month to month until October? October until October when, when we were finally able to sit down and sign a lease and then um, our lease will be going into June 30th again. So they renewed it just till June 30th. Mm -hmm. So like a nine month lease. Yeah. So was the lease renewed with a higher rent? Oh, yes. Yes, it was. It, it was it was um, about a hundred dollars more. What? No, one hundred seventy-five. One hundred and seventy-five dollars more. You went from twelve hundred to we from eleven seventy-five to twelve seventy-five. We went from eleven seventy-five to twelve seventy-five. Eleven fifty. Sorry. Eleven fifty. Eleven fifty to twelve seventy-five. Mm -hmm. Yes. Eleven twenty-five. Sorry. Is eleven okay, eleven twenty-five to twelve seventy-five? I'm okay. Sorry. The, the, the other witness should, should testify to those numbers when she has an opportunity to speak. So we don't have okay. two folks speaking at the same time. Okay, that's fine. 
Do you have the same sort of MRS? Do you, do you guys, do you have the same sort of maintenance issues or is your, are you good? Besides the, besides the common areas in your unit? In our unit. Um, we, when we came into the, uh, when we came to the apartment building, the bathroom had been done and renovated. Okay. Um, as, um, the, but there, we did run into some leak problems that we did let our landlord know. Um, they did attend to it. Um, as of now, there hasn't been any problems, but they were several times where we had flooding from upstairs, downstairs. Okay. Because, okay. yeah. All right, thank you. Anyone else for Amherst? Okay, well, we'll take the next witness. Okay. And if you would do the same and kind of state your name, your name and your last name, so that we can get it down for the record. Yes. Hi, my name is Shevanese, and I am um, Amaris's uh, roommate. Okay. So can you just spell to, your name for us? S e p v o n e s s e. Okay, and your last name? Dodd D o d d. Okay. All right. Go so ahead. just to kind of. Just to kind of piggyback what, she, what my roommate did say, um, I do co-sign a lot of things that she said, but it was a lot of trying to get him to answer the phone or get him to answer a text or email. And that did take a long time, all the way from May down to um, October when I finally courted him. Because I am in um, facilities operations for pro property at the time, I was in property management. It was one of those things where I had to use the rhetoric and the, and the jargon so that he could really answer me and realize I was serious. On a lot of different things so i'd have to say you know the code states this or you know you have to get back to me in this amount of time you know i'm in the business so i understood so he would answer me a lot of times via text because of the similarity or the, the references that i would use yeah but it's still like i said like she said it's a lot of different things that we had issues with um because i'm we're handy on our, on our own i have you know facilities background, I'm able to just fix certain things that are just minor. I don't go into anything that's big. I do make sure that that the property handles those things. But when our heat wasn't working or when they decided that they didn't want to turn the heat on because it was a certain amount of temperature outside the late day, like a week before, but you know, about five or six days in the temperatures, you know, every single day consecutively went down and they still wouldn't turn the, the boiler on downstairs. I had to pull the, you know, the rhetoric out. The cold states this, my heater is reading this because I have a, a thermometer that I can put into the baseboard heater and find out what it is. So it's a, like a lot of things that we had to we had to fight for that which normally if you pay or you want your tenant to pay a certain amount of money, you wouldn't have to go through all those problems just to get, you know, help for what, with whatever concerns you have, but I had to do those extra things in order for him to jump and help us. You had to threaten um, them with the codes, right? I did. I did. And I have cool. um I have a couple of city inspector friends, so I was able to, you know, bring that out there and make sure that it was done. So would you say up to code is a problem in many units there or absolutely especially when it comes to the the, the 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 mice infestation issue even the lady that was working in the office assisting whomever was there prior to um the, this gentleman that's here now she said she had mice running around her apartment running across her countertops and i was like um yeah that's not right you need to fight for that there is no way in my apartment if i saw a mouse running across my countertop i'm here working in the office and they're still not helping me that doesn't make any sense you know, that's, that's not okay. And then there's the garbage that's in the back. It's just absolutely disgusting. I used to send um, the old property manager um, pictures on his cell phone and say, is this okay? Is this, is this normal? This is not normal. You know, this is not, this is not 1275 living to um, have these dumpsters packed up like this and garbage. Even till this day, the dumpster is still not, it's, it, it gets dumped, but there's so much garbage around it. The landscapers are not coming and clearing that out of the, the bushes in the back. And then there's like, um, like kind of like a, I call it a moat, but it's not a moat. It's like this like stream in the back that's filled with garbage. The bushes, the bushes are piled up on top of it. Then there's garbage inside of it. Every time I walk to my car, I can hear things in the bush. Like I'm just like something's gonna jump out at me at, at some point or another. But there's just so much garbage. Now they put a big um 15 yard dumpster out there in the back that's 
blocking the whole path of egress for me to walk to my car, which I can go through the front of the building, that's fine, but there's older tenants that are having a hard time to go out to the front when their car is right here in the back, you know, and that 15 yarder is blocking the whole path. The dumpsters blocking the people's way to get to their cars? To get to their cars. And then the sidewalk on the side of it right there is all cracked up where, you know, when the ice forms over it, I hear the guys out there drilling out trying to get that ice out of there, but the sidewalk needs to be fixed. Granted, the weather is not conducive to that being fixed right now, but that was a problem way when it was warm outside and it was never fixed. Oh, people can trip and fall on the sidewalks. Correct. Even there's one behind our, in our behind our building too, where the sidewalks, the, the 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 little space between the two sidewalks don't meet too close to each other, which yep. is a simple fix, but they're just not fixing it. And I've have walked in high hills before and kind of like twisted my ankle a little bit, but I got back up. I was fine. But it's like if I wasn't me, or if I wasn't my person, but me being very resilient, somebody else coming towards that and falling into it would have hurt themselves. Yeah, would have hurt themselves, and there might have been a lawsuit if somebody got hurt, but. Yeah, so absolutely. would you say, how long have you lived there in this I've complex? lived there since 2020, 20, yeah. yeah, since um, 2020. And so were, was there any time when you had responsive and responsible upkeep of all things, or has this been an ongoing problem for ever since you got in there? Um, I would say that the first, the, the, that first, the first year we were here with the, the 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 landlord we started with, if we did have concerns, there 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 was a time of wait, but they were able to send someone to help us. Like we had the leak that was coming from the department upstairs down into our unit that we had to take care of at two o'clock in the morning, and then they did send someone to her apartment the next day to try to fix it. Then she claimed she had COVID, so it took two weeks for us to get any fixing done. From that but thankfully there was no other leak happening and so that that. Lot, that that land that better landlord is has sold everything he's not there anymore is what you're saying to correct her. she did she did sell it to the um empire realty and then they came in and just i mean not even like the the rent went from 11 11 25 to 12 75 and then in that short amount of time and that's very very aggressive there was nothing, yeah, especially, you know, especially in times of COVID when people aren't working and different things like that. Absolutely. And we tried, and he told us when we first, when he first, we first tried to negotiate or talk about rents, he told us a, a completely different price than what he, we ended up with in October. And it was very frustrating, but like I said, I'm in the business and I, I don't empathize with him at all because I'm the one that's dealing with it. I'm just not my tenants, it's me. And I'm like, I cannot believe I have to deal with this. But then I had empathy for my tenants now and realized that the things that we were doing was not okay because now I'm suffering and going through things that I did. But I tried my best to communicate with him as um, professional as I possibly could with it and just get us at least signed because if it's not written, it's not real. That's my code for everything. And so I had to make sure we got a lease up at least until the lease for June, you know, was um, the, the least the the least least time that we had all the way up till June so that we can at least be safe because they just really came off very unprofessional and shady. The lease for, was June to October? Yeah, we signed it in October. I finally, you know, pinpointed him and got him to um, create a lease for us. And we got it for October all the way until next June 30th. Okay. All Does right. Does anybody, Anthony or Lindsay, do you have any questions for Ms. Dodds? All right. Uh, is there any? I have one more question. I won't take too long. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, she, you had, um, you said you have a background in this um, Correct. I did. Yeah, I actually was. Did I you got work? Built. Did you do other property management? You're nothing to do with this property management, but you know. Nothing to do with this management at all. But you've no. done it before. Facility. You have a background in that. Correct. I was in facilities. I was a facilities operations management for another company. I won't say what name it is. Okay. But I okay. actually decided to leave that company, but just you know, within the last couple of months. Like I think I left in what that leave? October. October. Thank you. So I left like okay. right around the time I signed my lease. So at least you know what's going on and what the codes are and all that. Correct. So that's good. And I'm okay. able to call one of my guys to get something fixed really quickly or just do, we could just do it ourselves because we're very handy. Yeah, but you shouldn't have to do it yourself. Should <laughs> not. For 1275, okay. no. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.
All right. Um, one final word from the tenant, and then we'll move on to um, the landlord. I guess it's the property management. I don't think it's necessarily the landlord. Do you have any other words of that you want to tell us? Um, no, I think everything was expressed. Um, okay. I, and um, I do feel for the property manager, I feel like these are problems that he has inherited um, because we have so many different situations that it went from I, one person to another person to now another person. But uh, this was my way of finally being able to actually sit down and have a conversation of everything. Yeah, and you get to be heard Yeah. yeah from, some, from a neutral party. All right, I guess we'll move forward then with the hearing and uh, attorney Ken Slater will uh, take over and, and with the getting the landlord or the property manager in, um, installed or not installed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Put under oath. In, in, Put is, under there, is there a representative? <laughs> of, is, is there a representative of the landlord here? Hello. Hello. Could you uh, state your name for the record? My name is Dennis Delamecas. Okay. Could you raise your right hand? And Dennis, do you swear or affirm that the information you provide tonight uh, is true under the penalty penalties of perjury? Yes, I do. Thank you. Madam Chair. Could you spell your last name, please? Uh, it's D-A-L-A-M-A-G-A-S. G-A-F? G-A-F. All right. Thank you. All right, Dennis, who is the owner of Empire Realty? Besides so, M being LLC. Empire Realty is actually the previous management company. The new management company purchased this property on December 9th. So the property was. Yeah, I'm with CT Windsor. CT Windsor. And who is the who is the who actually purchased the property? So the property was sold from Empire Realty to CT Windsor, which is a completely different group. Okay, but isn't one person signed on the dotted line? So who signed on the dotted line? Um, this company is one that owns probably 8,000 units in Connecticut. I don't know who it is. It's a large out-of-state company. Okay. Um, it sounds, you know, I'm just gonna ask you about your communication style. Sure. <laughs> so what I'm hearing resoundingly with this group is they're not that, who, whoever, if, if, if I might for a second, um, yeah. all of their concerns are with the previous management, which I have no affiliation with. So I can't speak on that. We've only taken over for the past month, which I believe the tenant said that the, within the past month, the communication has been stellar. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know if they said stellar, but they did say it's been better. Mm -hmm. And, um, so anyway, yes. So here, so then you inherited um Zaib's $1,400 a month rent mm -hmm. that was a kind of forced upon him correct I just know that on the rent roll it said $1,400 and that's all I've been provided okay all right this puts a new wrench in it okay does anybody else on my commission have some other questions I might be thinking of it well, before the questions, Madam Chair, if uh, he should be permitted to just present his case uh, in defense oh, okay. of what All had right. been presented. And then, All and right. Then... You're right. He should be able to. And he already started. <laughs> okay. So um, like I said, we took over the property on December 9th from Empire Realty. Uh, so we've owned it for the past month, month and a half. Um, we instituted a lot of new features. So we've created a new online rent portal. Um, online maintenance request portal. Uh, we have an office set up in the Follybrook complex. We have a whole new maintenance team. Um, we've done a lot of communication improvements. Um, we've ordered probably eight uh, roll-off dumpsters and situated them across the property to clean up all the trash that was everywhere. Uh, we hired landscapers and did landscaping right before the snowfall, so we got all the leaves cleaned up. Um, we have a new landscaper for the snow removal who's doing constant salting and storm removal of the property 
Um, a lot of improvements are coming. They're doing a lot of renovations to common areas, units. Um, the entire complex is getting a whole facelift. So there's a lot in the works with this new people. Um, they've, the way that this new company does business is they buy and hold. So they have a lot of these, you know, 200 unit style condo complexes and they like to make them really nice. Um, I do know that Empire Realty, they had a blanket policy of everyone got increased to $1,400 a month, or that was at least the goal in the plan. Um, Empire was just more concerned with purchasing all of these individually owned units and then selling them as a package deal. So we took it on, it was, it's 184 units. Each four unit building was a separate owner. They purchased out all these owners and sold it as a package deal to us. So they weren't really concerned with maintenance. I understand all the grievances. They were terrible. And I've definitely heard that from all the tenants after taking over. Um, we're doing our best to resolve all the maintenance requests. There definitely were a lot. And yeah, um, I know our plan going forward, everyone is gonna be at $1,400 a month. That's just kind of the standard rate for Weathersfield for a two bedroom um, with heat and hot water included. I know the newly renovated units are going for $1,800 a month in the complex. So it's from our perspective, a very fair price. Um, that's all I have to say. Does anybody from my commission have any questions? I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like it may be a surprise to everyone that you are the new owners of the property and that that had not been communicated at least effectively to any of the tenants that we just heard from? So all the tenants got a um, notice posted onto their door with all of our new information on December 9th which I can forward to the commission if you'd like. I have it as a PDF. They also all got text messages and emails to set up for our new online portal system. And then a follow-up question to that. When you were communicating with them about raising their rent because the apartments are now gonna be very nice, was there a plan made to resolve some of the major issues that are existing in the apartment right now for folks? So we have developed the renewal increase plan, which puts everyone who's staying at the property at $1,400 and everyone who leaves the property, all the vacant units are getting renovated and those are gonna be $1,800. That's what the plan is. It has not been released yet because we haven't sent out any renewals. We've only owned the property for a month. Um, for all outstanding maintenance requests, we're still collecting those. I actually don't have any maintenance request records for this unit. So this tenant has not told me as of yet that any there's any problems in the unit. He might've told the previous owners, but that was not translated to me. So this is the first I'm hearing about all these issues. So at this point, the $1,400 is just the price that folks are paying because you bought the building. They're not actually, their rent hasn't been increased because there've been any improvements or any like de dealing with like the trash and the, you know, that sounds like that's an ongoing issue right now. So the $1,400 rate was in effect before we purchased the building. That's what Empire just, they did a blanket increase of $1,400 to everyone or everyone was planned to go to 1400. Um, our management is planning to continue that $1,400 blanket. Um, we are doing the improvements that were not done before by the previous management. So we do think that's warranted. We are like fixing the trash, we're cleaning up the property, we're getting the landscaping done, we're renovating common areas, we're fixing the maintenance requests. What about things like rusty pipes and mold? And I know you said you weren't aware of it now, but are you planning to address those issues? So now that I've been made aware of it, I can submit a maintenance, a maintenance request for these issues and we can get them resolved. So you are going to do that? Yes. Dennis, how long have you been uh, working with this, this uh, group? I started with them um, November 
22nd in preparation for the purchase of this property, but they didn't purchase the property until December 9th. And what did you do before uh, your employment with them? So before my employment with them, I have my own management company. I have my own properties. Um, and then I did work for a different group in West Hartford. And that group in West Hartford was purchased out by Empire Realty. So I did some consulting with them, which is probably where he knows me from. I built their, um, I built Empire Realty's online portal system. And I tried to uh, research a little bit. You said DT Management is the owner? D is in oh. David? Um, for this new property for Follybrook, it's Follybrook Apartments LLC. That's what I did notice that. Um, do you have reference to any of the other complexes that have gone through this type of uh, situation? Um, what do you mean? Are there any other conversions that you've updated older buildings into a new model? I'm just trying to, I'm trying to research a little bit online uh, to, to compare this with apples with apples. So with this, with this company, I've only been working with them for two months. So I don't know what they've done. I've seen the renovations with the new units and they are gorgeous. Um, they definitely are going to increase the value of the property and, you know, make it a much better place to live. Do you have a, a timeline or a build out plan on when the renovations will take place? And have so, you considered relocating existing tenants? Um, wh while their unit is being updated? So we have, I think, eight vacant units right now that are all getting updated. Um, new floors, new kitchens, bathroom updates, all that kind of stuff, new paint, everything. Um, those are nearly complete. So we've been doing those over the past month and they've come out gorgeous. So they're almost about to hit market. Those will be at $1,800 a month as per the owners. Um, any tenant is welcome to switch to one of those units for the $1,800 a month rate. Um, anyone who wants to stay in their current unit, though, is just going to stay at the $1,400 a month rate. There aren't any planned renovations for the $1,400 a month. Okay, you've listened to the testimony from three of the occupants there. Uh, what, are your, what are your feelings about uh, a transitional period? What, how do you expect to resolve the situation? Um, so I can't speak on how the previous management did business. I... Obviously, I've had tons of complaints from a lot of tenants at the property that the previous management was absolutely terrible, and that's why they sold the property. Um, our management style is a lot better. We've had much better reviews on our management style since taking over the property. Um, so I can only say that going forward, things are going to get a lot better at the property, but I can't speak to what happened before. What about people that can't afford the $1,400 that are still there now? Will they be evicted? Unfortunately, I do think that because Follybrook had such a long period of no rental increases, um, those rents have drastically fallen behind market value. And unfortunately, those people might have to find other places to live. Does anybody else have any other questions? I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that you said that you're in the process of renovating and you're working on getting everything up to code and that you've only been there for a month, but some of the issues that they mentioned are things that I feel like could have been resolved at this point. So they mentioned in the basements where they have the laundry <laughs> facilities, that it smells bad down there, that they're supposed to be lint um, trash cans that have lint in them that should be taken out that seem like they could be a fire hazard, um, that there's trash in the hallways. That seems like at this point, within a month, why, hasn't, why haven't those simple issues been addressed? So we have um, needed to hire new staff. Um, we're still looking for new staff. We're trying to get a full maintenance team. We're trying to get a whole cleaning staff on call. Um, our main priority was doing the landscaping before it snowed. So we got a landscaper contracted and then getting the snow removal contracted. But we're still working on getting these more core um, people on staff. And then I have another question. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead, Diane. No, I do have a, how many people do you have on staff to take care of these Follybrook Apartments LLC? So right now I am a dedicated property manager for the whole complex. Um, we have 
two more office people, you know, on call. And then we have a maintenance team of three people that are shared among other properties in the area. We want to get a dedicated person, but we haven't hired them yet. How many, uh, how many other properties does your maintenance team handle? You said three others. So how many are in each one of those complexes and where are they? Um, so those ones are in Newington and okay. it is three properties. I would say about 400 units. Okay. So three people amongst three big complexes, right? Mm -hmm. Does that, that's, does that seem, seem like enough people to you to handle three different, three big complexes? Uh, historically, it's been enough. Um, we do have some extra time, which is why they're temporarily at Follybrook, but we are trying to hire another two, one or two people to ha handle all Follybrook. So all together, how many units, counting all the three places, are these people maintaining or going to maintain? Um, let me get an exact number from my rental software. One moment. So Follybrook is 184 units. And then... Newington? I think he said 400. Um, we've got 64 units at one property in Newington. And the other one is... The other one's 64 units. Okay, I'm, it was 400 total. Okay, gotcha. I was going to say that's a lot. <laughs> 400 total in Newington or total? No, total altogether. 64, right. 64, and 184. Okay. All right. Is what he's saying. Mm -hmm. I get it. So we are trying to, to hire two additional people. We just haven't gotten suitable candidates yet. And then I had, I had another question, Diane. Go ahead, Lindsay. Um, so it sounds like from what we heard that there's going to need to be a lot of work done on Zaib's bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, there was a leaky toilet, there's mold, there's a bunch of rust in the bathtub and he only has one bathroom yeah. in his unit. What accommodations are being offered to people when you plan to fix these major issues? Not necessarily getting a brand new remodeled unit, but just bringing things up to code so that things are reasonably livable. What accommodations are you making for folks that would justify this rent increase? So for this unit in particular, um, from what I've heard about these maintenance requests, this one's gonna require him to move to a different unit because I don't think we can do all of these renovations with him living there, especially with only having one bathroom. I can offer him another unit that's you know, decently updated for $1,400 a month. And what does decently updated mean? A uh, decently updated would be hardwood floors, um, you know, probably original kitchen, um, original bathroom, but it would be cleaned, painted, you know, turned over nicely. It just wouldn't be, you know, luxury. And would he receive any like temporary de decrease in rent? to make up for the fact that he would have to move into a different unit? Um, so currently he has been paying the full rent amount for the past two months. So I can waive that if he would like to move to the other unit just to make things easier for him. You said you could waive it? Yes. So I think he was, um, so currently he owes $690 that he hasn't paid for the past two months and I can get that waived. Okay, so he has so the $690 that he owes. Mm -hmm. 
and what is what is that? He's so 1400. So he hasn't totally paid his 1400 a month. So he paid 1080 for December and 1030 for January, which leaves him with a $690 balance. Uh, does anybody else have any more questions for Dennis? <clears throat> at this at this time, um, Attorney Slater, does Zaib have a chance to speak again, or? He does. He's the complainant. He should get a, a last opportunity and, you know, provided he doesn't write, if he presents completely different information or, or brand new information, okay. and, uh, it's possible that the, uh, that the, the, the landlord's representative should be able to comment. But other than that, he can, he can close in response in response to what he's heard from the uh, landlord's representative. Okay. Are we ready to move forward in that area? Commission? Landlord? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, Zaid, do you have any last, last resounding words? Well, um, to answer why I have that amount balance that's still due, um, after consulting with the attorney general, I was told that um, because I started this whole process, I was only required to pay the previous amount agreed upon that I was originally paying, which was the 1,030. The 1,080 was because I was late paying my rent. So that was a $50, $50 late fee. That's why I paid 1,080. Um, and that is why I have that balance. Um, also to, to answer that um, the property was sold, I was surprised. I did get receive that paper on my door uh, stating that the property, that there was new property uh, owners, but I wasn't really sure if it was brand new owners or because the previous uh, property manager before Dennis uh, stated to me in one of our few conversations that they were looking for a third party management company to manage our rent. So when they took over CT Windsor management and I read the letter, I wasn't sure that if the property was sold to CT management, or Windsor Management, or if that they were just a third party management company that was now handling our rent. So that was my confusion there in that aspect. Um, so I was surprised to hear at this moment and gives me my answer actually that yes, the property has been sold again. And Dennis has only been a part of this situation for about two months now. Um, for me, this was just a moment to, to, to obviously you know, air out my grievances and to speak. Um, I did, I, it was very frustrating. Um, I do feel that, you know, um, I, the market apparently is going for 1400 for two bedrooms with he and hot water included. I'm not sure. I don't know much about that. But at the same time, I feel that, you know, it's because these things haven't been done yet, you know, all these things that need to be done, I don't, feel that I should be paying that amount until some things have been taken care of. You know, because I feel like even with the, the the market being that for, you know, two bedroom, one bath, the square foot or whatever, um, I feel like my apartment, because of previous management, nothing was taken care of or updated. Cause it's because like I said in my in my in my email to you, like even the floors, like the hardwood floors are completely messed up. There's scratches all over the place. There's no shine to it. There's parts that are, the, 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 the um, hardwood floors are rising up and there's cracks in the hardwood floors. There's tiles in the kitchen, there's cracking and coming apart. You could literally pull it out. You know, um, same similar situation for the bathroom. You know, I just feel like there's so much, like I said, I, I contacted a, a contractor who came and I gave him a list of things and asked him how much it would cost to fix all these things and update them. The price he gave me was around $10,000 to $11,000.
And to me, for me to be paying $1,400 and these things have yet to have been improved, I feel to be a little unfair. You know, the going rate for an increase in rent in Connecticut, when I read, was about 3% to 7% increase. Um, and I and in this situation, my rent dramatically increased by at least 35 percent. So, you know, for, for, for me to be asked to pay that amount right off the rip or choose to live someplace else, um, I, I found that kind of unreasonable. And um, at the end of the day, you know, I just wanted an opportunity to sit down and speak to management about this. And I didn't get at the opportunity, in, at least until now. And hopefully going forward there might be some chance to talk about this because it seems like there's different situations for everybody going on in, in this whole entire apartment complex. And uh, I don't know everybody's situations, but I do know a lot of my neighbors were already locked into a lease. And obviously they have to wait for that lease to finish. So they're not in a similar situation as me. Um, but they have expressed to me that there's no way they can afford, especially with everything that's that's been happening in the apartments that 1400 uh, once their old leases are done. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, does anybody have any? Well, I, I guess we're done with questions, right? Attorney Slater, now we- as if you, It depends if what uh, Mr. Ayala oh. just said, warrants any additional questions, but uh, if it's just a closing argument, then uh, I think you could, um, if the commissioners don't have any more questions, uh, you could ask if uh, uh, either the complainant or the respondent has anything else and you could close the hearing. I, I have one more question for Zaib. You've listened to Dennis Zaib. Um, do you feel there's opportunity to segue into another unit or are you asking for this rent to be maintained as it is for a certain period of time? Is that gonna be part of your closing argument? Yeah, I, I mean, I would definitely like to discuss it, but if, if, if there's no room for negotiation with the price and 1400 is the amount, I'm not sure if I can continue to afford that in my current situation. Um, and if I can continue or give, in, give some time to continue to pay what I'm currently paying until I'm able to find a place that I'm able to transition to, you know, this, this will all have to be talked about. The issue from the beginning was there was no open communication. So if those things can now be talked about and we can come to a you know common understanding going forward, that'd be great. Um, Cause uh, truthfully, I, I was alarmed uh, it, um, with a message that I received from Dennis in the beginning of, close to the beginning of January, um, like the first week, uh, he was asking me, um, was it, uh, when, was I moving out January 31st and where was I moving to? Um, that was a surprise to me. I asked him if he had the right number, but uh, he, he was, was talking to me and he said that I have expressed to him that I was gonna vacate the, the, the property by the end of the month, but that was something I never stated. I did state that I disagreed with the amount that I was being charged month to month the rent, but I never said that I was already ready to vacate. That is something that I did not express to him. Um, and that's when I made him aware that I did file a complaint with the Fair Rent Commission. And um, here we are now. You know, this is a process I started back in October. Right. Um, so uh, this was all based off of uh, a, a previous land property manager or, or owners that has now transitioned to what we, we, we we're currently at. So it, it's kind of a weird situation that I'm not sure how to handle. <laughs> I have a quick question too. So you're, do you think he's saying that if you can't afford the $400 rent that you get, you'll have to move out of the whole place and find some cheaper rent elsewhere? That's what it sounds like. Uh, it sounds like they're trying to, uh, yeah. If you want afford the fourteen hundred, you can stay. If you can't, you should leave. And if once you leave, we're gonna fix up the apartments to look nicer, so they could charge even more. That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for your presentation. And I have I have one more question. Um, for would would you consider 
$1,400 to be a fair amount of rent if improvements are made to the property, if your bathroom is fixed, if the doors are fixed and all of that, and the apartment is nicer? Is that something that you, I know you had mentioned in your letter that you, you felt like it was fair if the improvements had been made? Is that something that, you know, would you consider paying, you know, your current rent until all of those repairs are made and then $1,400? Um, I feel, uh, well, after speaking to people who I can trust, I feel that um, even after those things are done, um, 1400 is still high. Um, but it was something that I, when I spoke to the previous management, um, we, yeah, he actually negotiated that he could drop to 1300 um, which seems kind of a little high to me too. You know, I, I go off of the basis of, of, what I've, of what I've researched and I offered to pay 1200 if, if those things, you know, were done, I felt like that was a fair amount for, for, for the work that they would be doing and it would be livable at that point and affordable for me. Um, but no, to me, 1400 would still be very high. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, um, with no further questions, I guess that, um, the hearing is done finished and now we go into deliberation um, if i may oh i'm sorry dennis just real quick um so the landlord has authorized me to offer him this other unit um with all of these maintenance requests that have to be done you know considering the bathroom and the kitchen and everything else uh, we really can't do the repairs with him in that unit if it's really gotten to be that bad so we can offer him another unit that is, you know, up to code and decently renovated and nice for fourteen hundred. Um, this property was purchased with the intent from the owner of this apartment being rented for fourteen hundred. Um, that's what we were told when we purchased it. That's what the purchase price was based off of. So I think it would be unfair to say that we have to get charged, you know, a huge percentage less than what we were told at closing. Um, and then what other people are also playing in the complex and what the fair market value is. Um, if the unit really does need $10,000 of renovation, that is the significant capital expense. And we're definitely gonna have to recuperate that in some way, which is an increase of the rent. Um, at $1,000 a month with heat and hot water included, that doesn't really allow for that kind of capital expense. Yeah. So we can offer him another unit. Um, I have three available right now. And if he wants to speak to me about that after the meeting, we can certainly work that out. Great. So That's I it. See. Did you, you were saying something, Diane? Sorry. I was, yeah, I was just going to say, did you, yeah, I guess you heard what he said. And I mean, that's a possibility. Something to think if about. Can, if you can afford it. Yeah, if you can yeah. afford it. If I can afford it. You know, that was such a huge jump, you know. You know, the, um, everything I have in my life right now was based off of what I was previously paying. And I obviously with a little extra for emergencies and other situations and stuff like that. To jump up to $1,400 is a big chunk out of, you know, my financial yeah, situation. $370 increase is a big, is a big chunk. <laughs> Yeah. out of anybody's budget really i i do empathize with you and with that yeah. um and I'll, also too you know um even if i chose to leave you know how would that process work would i still be required to pay 1400 a month going forward when i'm looking for a new place to live because in that case it would make it kind of difficult to collect the money needed to be able to move into a new place, um, having to pay $1,400 a month and still collect the new security deposit to go to a new place. So I, I would have to have open communication and, and, and try to, f to discuss how that's gonna work and how much time would I be given to look for a new place and, and so on and so forth. So many questions will come about uh, depending on the results of this meeting, obviously. Yeah. Um, on the same hand, 
I mean, if you're paying a thousand thirty, heat and hot water is included. That that is that it's is still nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I have to say, I don't, yeah. I don't know if I was supposed to and say I, it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not requesting, you know, to, I wasn't requesting even in the beginning when all this started I to know. stay at that amount, you know, but the fact that it was increased almost 35% more than what I was already paying, I just, something I couldn't accept at that time. And I still right. can't accept it, you know. Right. Um, Madam Chair, I, I would suggest that if the evidence is actually done, then you know, certainly yeah. the, the, the landlord and tenant can have any opportunity yeah. to talk on, on their own, but for the purposes of the hearing and the commission's decision-making, it sounds to me anyway that the, the evidence is, has concluded. Uh, and if the uh, landlord and tenant don't have any additional evidence to present, the, the hearing could be closed. We all set? Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Well, move to close the hearing, if you will. Move to close the hearing. And I'll second, I'll second that motion. All right, so. Um, you should call the, the, the motion's been made and seconded, so there should be a vote and it should be a roll call. You need, because we're on the, right, because right, just right, the right. nature of the online service, you, you or online meeting method, you should call each of the commissioners to say whether they are in favor or against the motion to close the public hearing. Right. Anthony, are you in favor of the motion to yes. adjourn the yes, meeting? Yes, I am. Close the hearing, yes, I am. Susan, are you in favor of closing the meeting? Yes. Lindsay, are you in favor of closing the meeting? Yes. All right, meeting adjourned. Closed. Closed. <laughs> so um, at this point, uh, Attorney Slater, do we want to discuss we i know that uh the tenant and the landlord can be excused that's the welcome to watch um they're not they should stay on mute they're not permitted to uh to present any more information right um, it's up to the commission the commission can you know it can can discuss someone could make a motion and uh and then you discuss the motion uh, if you're not ready to make a motion you know it, it, I don't know where where you all stand on that. It probably makes sense to talk it out a little bit until somebody's yeah. ready to make the motion. Did you yeah, say that the landlord and tenant aren't part of this commission now? They're, no, they're, no, no, they're, no. The, 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 the actual the complainant and the respondent are not part of the all right. discussion the now. No, no. The la right. landlord tenant representatives on the commission are, of course. Oh, okay. <laughs> I misunderstood. No problem. Okay, so yeah, we can have a little conversation. Um, Anthony, I'll start with you. What do you think? Well, we've had three people testify. There might be more around the corner. I think uh, the duress has been incredibly emotional for at least six months to maybe a year, maybe two. I think the, uh, the both uh, all three occupants of these units have showed a history of duress. Uh, in the same regard, it's only been one month that this new company has come through. Um, I'm trying to Google them as we're, we're listening to the testimony, thinking that we have a, a company coming into Weathersfield, given a good faith effort, waiving a, a couple months worth of, of, uh, of uh, 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 increase that was changed. I think Dennis represented the company very well. And again, it's brand new. It's brand new for Zaib and, and all the tenants down there for properties that have been neglected, it sounds like for quite a while. I was hoping that it would be a little more of a transition period and timeline and fee amount for Dennis with Zaib and maybe Dennis could offer it to all three of these people. Uh, I'm more intrigued to see how many more complaints we're gonna get. Again, this has all only occurred a month ago. So, um, yeah, I'm very concerned that uh, whatever we decide tonight won't only affect Zaid, but it will affect uh, a handful more, maybe even up to a dozen more people. There's a lot of units down here. They've been neglected for quite a while. Um, with the dumpster overflow, the neglection has been significant. We've got the Folly Brook itself that garbage is going into that could potentially go into the uh, Weathersfield Cove. Um, you know, so this property has been really abused for quite a while. So, uh, 
um, those are just my observations uh, to decide what our objectives are. I'd like to welcome everyone else to speak and see where we're going with this. Yeah, I agree with all of you on that. And my other concern is people coming into our community and then really just looking for the dollar and not necessarily caring about the property or what it looks like or the people and the inhabitants that live there. You know, we do, you know, we want everyone to, to feel welcome in Weathersfield and, um, and be proud of their home. And if they're having to fight mice off their countertop and, and kick garbage off their front doorstep, that, that's not very welcoming. So I'm a little concerned and I think that the garbage should have been like one of the first things that they, they addressed. And, you know, I, I know that they're busy, but to me, that's an easy fix. <laughs> to me, that's an easy fix. Fix, just keep the debris and the garbage up. So that's my thought. I, it's a tough call. It's tough because you're right. They've only been in, in uh, for what, six weeks? And really, I didn't feel confident with concrete. I mean, we, we, we're going to do, we're going to do, we're going to do. I realized they've only been in business six weeks and they they got a dumpster and then they got the landscaping company to take care of the snow and ice. Yeah, I don't know. Anybody else? Yeah, I think it's pretty hard to figure out in my opinion because it seems that if this new company cannot be blamed for the total mess that is in. No, they can't. So, and everything they did make complaints about were about a former company or company. So yeah, we were all, I don't know what kind of one. a decision. Well, I don't know what kind of a decision we can make. And I do believe that mm -hmm. the new owners have come in and they are determined to have higher rents and some of these people can't afford them so they probably will have to move out that seemed to be the bottom line fourteen hundred dollars was the bottom line and everything else would go up from there so i really don't know how how we would address this i don't know how it gets resolved or i'm just throwing this out so i I, I will give the uh, new the new property manager credit. I thought he had a fair proposal for Saeed. Um, it's just a matter. I mean, he's he's trying. I felt like he was. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was trying, and I, I, you know, I, I will give him credit for that. Um, but you know, it's a matter of Saeed can you know he'll have to sit down with him and he can, uh, you know, afford to do that. So that's kind of something between the two of them. Um, I would like to see him do a wholehearted, uh, you know, I'd want him to be wholehearted with all of the tenants, not just Zaid, but he needs to be fair across the board with all of them as far as that goes. And what I understood him to say is as they move out, they're going to redo it. I didn't hear they were going to go in and fix up people's places that are already there. They no, they're going to redo it so they can charge more. Right. They're going to be charged the 1400 Lindsay, you haven't had a chance yet. I think so. Zayib mentioned that he feels like it would be fair if repairs were made to the apartment to increase the rent to $1,200 a month, which is still a 16.5% increase. Mm -hmm. And while, yes, the new property managers and the property owners did inherit these issues from the folks that they bought it from, the, the quality of life of the tenants has consistently declined. And so springing such a high, really unmanageable increase on folks who are living with toilets that they can't flush and tiles that are coming up, I think we... You know, I'm concerned about shifting the burden to the tenants where then they would have to feel responsible for following up with the property management, 
making sure that these repairs are being made because there, I did hear a lot of promises, but like, I mean, like you said, there, some of these issues are quick fixes, right? Mm -hmm. Cleaning up the basements, fixing the washer and dryers, making sure that the washers and dryers are replaced if they're broken, um, dealing with the sidewalks outside even, you know, that doesn't take a lot of time. Um, and definitely the trash issue, if it's such a, if it's the issue, it sounds like, as well as just bringing in folks to deal with pest control, right? Like maybe the situation couldn't be totally under control, but someone would have reached out to make an appointment. And I know when I have mice in my apartment, my landlord sends somebody out immediately, right? Like mice happen, but you shouldn't have to live with them. Um, and so I just, yeah, I just, I have a concern because it is such a large group of people. And just from this one, the issues with this one apartment are, there are many of them. What, pre yeah, like what precedent are we sending if we, if we, if we just say, okay, well you live here and it's $1,400 a month. I just, I, I don't see a reason for that increase. So as a commission, what can we do? What, what do we do now? Okay, what, <laughs> what you do is, this is Ken Slater for the record, uh, based on the criteria in the, the, the 13 set of criteria, yeah. um, mm. basically you've heard all of the evidence, uh, you, know, the, you have what you're really charged to do is not necessarily negotiate a deal, but sometimes in these hearings, you know, both sides will hear things and they'll find an opportunity and they can resolve that on their own. What you're charged with determining is whether or not this is a fair rent, um, and what, and if it is, then uh, then then that would resolve the complaint. If it is not, then you determine what you believe is a fair and equitable rent based on on the on the current circumstances, uh, where it is from from what you've heard from from the evidence. What is a fair and equitable rent? Now, when you make that determination, it's under these circumstances. Uh, if the uh, and, and if you determine that it wasn't fair and you set a number, uh, then and the landlord resolves a bunch of issues and the the management of garbage and the management everything is dramatically changed um, and the rent is increased. Uh, Mr. Ione would have another opportunity to make a complaint to you, but under the evidence that you hear at that point, you might determine that it's a different number. So um, I'm not trying to lead you to find anything because you might very well conclude the 1400 is perfectly reasonable under these circumstances. But if you don't, you, you, uh, you have the ability both under Connecticut general statutes and your ordinance under the general statutes to set a fair and equitable rent under the circumstances that you've, you've heard today. Uh, that doesn't mean that's the rent for the rest of history, but it would be the, the reasonable rent that can be charged, fair and equitable rent that can be charged now. Uh, and then the landlord, if they made, again, have made improvements, then, the, then the, if the rent was increased. Would be fair fair and equitable rent for the person that was the complainant tonight. That's the only one we're concerned about. That is correct. correct. Okay. Liz, before you. I do think it's worth just worth acknowledging that the fact that he was only paying 1030 a month is because he was told to pay that amount by the attorney general and not because he was refusing to pay the rent. So when he offers to forgive it, that wasn't something that he was doing out of spite or because he didn't have the money. It was because that was what he told to do while this complaint was being worked out. Yes, I, I don't. I mean, in terms of his, if if, if you determine that the fair rent was $1,400, then he'd be behind that amount and, and then he would, you know, that's something he would have to work out with, uh, with his landlord. If on the other hand, you determine that $1,030 was a fair rent under this, under these circumstances, then you'd be making it because his complaint is, is been, been out there. Uh, then you'd be essentially making a finding that he doesn't owe the $690 because the fair and equitable rent uh, post, you know, with his complaint should have been 1030. Um, and conversely, if you decided that it was 1200 or whatever the number is that you decided, that would determine how far behind he is. So that's the power that you have is to decide what the fair and equitable rent uh, during the complaint period should have been. And there's been two months 
that the landlord said he's behind, should have paid 1400. What he owes based on your, your, the code of ordinances is what you're gonna determine is fair and equitable. And it's not a matter of penalizing him for not, not paying it. He'll owe it if you made the determination he should, potentially that the rents were, were right, or maybe he'll owe us a lesser number if you make a, another determination or an equitable. Well, and, and, I think and, that Dennis said he was going to waive the six hundred ninety dollars. He did. Well, it wouldn't be a waiver if you determined that that ten thirty is the right number. You'd be determining oh. that he wouldn't be entitled to the six hundred oh. in the first place. Okay. So, All right. But, but I mean, I'm not saying that what, that offer shouldn't be appreciated. But what what you have to decide is what the fair rent is. If you set the fair rent at fourteen hundred, I think that the that. I know that the landlord said he would waive those two and going yep. forward, it would be 1400. So that's what he said on the record. If you determine that the fair market rent is something different than 1400, then that would be used as the calculus of how much uh, Mr. Ione owes uh, the, the landlord based on what he's paid today. Does that make sense? Yes, it, it does. But what if the uh, company then Fights back or stews or something or other. I don't you know. But the, comp the company's right is to take an appeal to the superior court uh, based on, on your determination. And conversely, if you make a determination and the company doesn't honor it, then uh, the town has the ability to seek enforcement by the courts. So this determination will, how long does this last? If we decide that 2030 is okay until they fix it up and then it's, he's going to have to pay more it, anyway it's, sorry i didn't mean to interrupt no i don't know no i'm not i don't know much about rents and stuff so the people that are in the real estate business can answer that but well if you talk it through and, and you you're going to make a decision of in the in the circumstances that it's in now you'll set what you think is fair and equitable rent if going forward the landlord makes a great a number of improvements. And then the landlord says, yes, I, I understand the Weathersfield uh, Fair Rent Commission set the number at whatever you set it at. Um, the circumstances have now changed. We've done this, 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 and that. So now your rent is a different number. Mr. Ione at that point would make another appeal to you. And in, in that point, you'd again have to make a decision. The rent had been changed from what you said it at 12, you know, I'll say, I'm just gonna say for the sake of argument, 1200 or 1400. Well, I mean, 14 is what they are at. But if you and said that's it- until they number, fix it, upgrade it. That's when, until they upgrade it. When they feel comfortable enough that they, that, that is warranted that they could increase it. And then that would be subject to another appeal to you. So it, for, for, it would be set for the time being. And until such time that the, the landlord believes that, uh, and now again, I'm assuming the landlord wouldn't appeal your decision. Uh, the landlord took steps to to improve the place and believe that the number should go up. Then the landlord would increase it in the future, and then it would be subject to another appeal to you if, in fact, the the land the tenant believes that the number is is not is still not reasonable. For okay. fair enough. Let the real estate people figure this one out. Well, well, actually, fourteen hundred, including the high heat and hot water is not the end of the world. I mean, right. it, I know it's probably high and I feel bad, but honestly, including heat and hot water, 1400, I mean, a thousand, they're losing money on that. I mean, and whether we care or not, I don't know. <laughs> but it, that is a tough pill to swallow to be a landlord and 1,030 and, and heat and hot water is included. Now they do have some, uh, responsibility. I think that the landlord has a lot of responsibility. Communication being prime, they need to be diligent and respectful and attentive to their tenants. And I didn't hear that. Uh, hopefully this Dennis will be. Um, he's only been in business here for a month, so we don't know. Less than. So do we put that as part of our decision? That's that puts a rock in the whole thing because yeah, yeah, I think we have to. I mean, I feel like it is, is fair for to come back 
when some repairs have been made and when we have an idea about what is going to be, you know, I think right now our job is only to consider the exactly. state of his, yeah, yeah his, his right. apartment as it is and his apartment, it sounds like is, is borderline unlivable. So I, I personally don't see, I can't find a way to justify increasing someone's rent when their bathroom is full of mold and their tiles yeah, are coming but, up. But that, but the I, agree. Are, I agree with that. I agree, but the landlord agreed to move him to a $1,400 apartment that was, you know, not renovated per se, but up to code and up to par. And now the, what I didn't recognize is if he's moving him back or if he, I, I understood he's just moving him. I think he's just well, moving. He's up. still going to have to pay fourteen hundred dollars in the new one, and when it comes back to the old one, it's going to be fourteen hundred dollars. So. Correct. So I don't know I if guess. he's going to move him back in. I don't know about that. Did he say uh, that? That's, you know, back and forth. No. That's those no. kinds of things. Are things that the list is concerned for the record. Those are the things that the tenant. I can't hear you. Yeah, we can't hear you. I'm not on you. Can you still not hear me? Yeah, now you're better. Yeah, you were just breaking up a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, those kinds of things, while they came up during the hearing, those are negotiations that the landlord and the tenant can have. And they okay. Agree so that. all we're doing is saying 12 or 14. Whatever you whatever, determine. 10, is 30, 30, 12, or four, what is just determining. Under well, I guess all the evidence I have you heard. To do that, I have to say that fixed up is 1400 Maybe not fixed up 1200 but. Can I, can I make a motion that Zaid pay a rent starting February 1st at 1200 a month, that he be forgiven for the difference since uh, he has not paid the full amount and we give him a six month transitional period to negotiate out beyond the $1,200 a month rental rate, assuming that, and it's all focused on health, and safety violations. That's the overriding issue here. Correct. Uh, this is a, an example of a transitional proposal so that it's not just Zaid, but other people are going through the same experience. It allows them to figure it out with the new landlord coming in. And I think the offer at 1400 a month is below the 1800 a month that they'll be getting as they renovate these other units. It gives Zaid a six month period to uh, to consider that and uh, and hopefully that Zaib and Dennis can work out a better arrangement. So I'll put that in the form of a motion. Anybody want to second it? I second it. <laughs> Am I allowed to? I'm the chair. I didn't. <laughs> sure, sure. Then we yeah. can have a discussion and we could vote it up or vote it down. Okay, I'll second it. Okay, so. Just say it again that from he, February 1st, he gets he, a six months transitional period. Right, right. at 1200 The 1200 a month. And the, and the, with, with, with the health and safety issues in his existing apartment, he'll stay there. The health and safety issues will be satisfied by the, by the landlord, by the property owner. Okay, and within six months now uh, from February 1st, He'll have an opportunity to visit, be visited with us, but hopefully negotiate things out with Dennis and the uh, property owner. Are we saying that 1200 February 1st is conditional on those safety issues being resolved within the, the rent within, increase? Within the existing unit, it will be done. We can put a timeline on the health and safety issues to be completed. So you'd still like be living in the same completed. unit. Yeah, he can but still he, live in it. So it he will live here. We, he'll be living in it. He'll be living in it while they're doing yeah. that. Yeah. As they'll be repairing the basic repairs to allow it and satisfy health and safety violations. Well, I thought the guy said they had to move him out to do all that. Well, that would be a different motion if you wanted to oh, accommodate yeah. Dennis and and that in that request. Can I can I ask uh, Ken Please. Slater for the record? Um, is the chair had suggested that if the place was was renovated in good condition, that the fourteen hundred dollars would be a a fair rent? 
um, are, is there a consensus on, on, on that perspective? And then I'll, and, I, and then I have another couple of steps to go from there. Um, I'm not sure. It, 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 well, let me, let me explain where, where I'm going. You have the ability to determine what the fair rent is. You've heard testimony uh, regarding the unresponsiveness, some of the bigger problems that uh, the uh, Mr. Ione was having over the course of the last couple of months, and there's been some improvement uh, that have, has happened with uh, with the new management. I think rather than determine that you'd give them a, a, a waiver, uh, I think what you could determine under the evidence, if you th if you agreed, was that um, prior to uh, you know, this point in time that the appropriate rent was the $1,030 uh, that going forward as of February 1, uh, based on, you know, the improved communication and, and the, the new uh, uh, manager, that a fair amount rent is, is $1,200. Um, and the expectation uh, would be that uh, in the next, you know, within the next six months, some arrangements would be made to renovate it, um, and if it is renovated, uh, a fourteen hundred dollar rental is is fair and reasonable. So rather than uh, you just essentially be be setting what you think are fair rates under the different circumstances, one being you know the last couple of months, uh, one being going forward, and then acknowledging that you believe a six month period would be a reasonable period for for it to be renovated. Something along those lines, because you really your authority is to establish what the fair rent is, and not to you know sort of attach other conditions to it per se. But I understand where you're going with that, and that's a, a, it seems to be a reasonable time to you know either for you know make arrangements that he can find a way to pay for that. Uh, they find a way to improve it uh, that way, uh, and and uh, and if not. Um, and you know, perhaps he does move out, but that gives a, a window of time in which all those things could happen. But that that motion wouldn't make any sense if you folks, if there isn't consensus with what the chairman had suggested, which would be a renovated apartment, fourteen hundred dollars would be fair for this existing tenant. I think that clarifies where I was going, Councillor. Appreciate that. Um, I do agree with Diane that the rent at uh, was it ten thirty. For the condition that is was within reason, but uh, the twelve hundred for a six month period, I think, is a a good transitional amount, and the fourteen hundred would be within a reasonable fair rent, as we're obligated to focus on. If the property were renovated as yes. described. Exactly. So my question still is: Is he? I thought the guy said he'd have to be moved out to do all the renovations, and if he's in a better apartment while they're doing this is he still going to be paying 1200 or 1400 i'm just going by what dennis said i saw it sounded like that the stuff that needs to be done there the people won't be able to you know if they got to pull the toilet apart and do all the pipes and all that how can you stay in there but that's just and they might not be able to but that's something that i think it's uh i don't know that they could know what they can accomplish uh but i think the the, the motion that's contemplated uh by uh yeah mr Hamiki or commissioner Hamiki would be um that they they will work that out but if he's staying okay. for the right. next six months if he if he moves out they'll they'll have to make arrangements of the terms that he would move it out i don't exactly. think i don't think you can set what the rate would be with him in another unit well, yeah, I agree with that, but I just think it's impossible to do all they have to do with him in it. But I could be wrong. I'm not. I'm not in the real estate business, especially with one bathroom. <laughs> but maybe they could do it. I go. I go along with the motion. Lindsay, I think there's just a difference between a totally renovated apartment and a livable apartment, and that with no repairs being made with rusty water with a moldy bathroom those kind of livability issues i don't see how you can charge someone more until those are taken care of i mean some of the other stuff the tiles on the floor all of that coming up i see like increasing to 1200 but i would just want to see either an agreement or it would be 
an increase once those issues were were resolved. As long as the apartment's not safe to live in and wouldn't pass an inspection, I I don't see how you can justify increasing someone's rent. Well, so you're most, saying keep it bet. You're saying keep it at ten thirty, Lindsay, and until repairs have been made so that it's or accommodations have been made so that it's livable. So it doesn't necessarily have to be pretty, but it's safe. The health and safety violations were part of my observation. Exactly. Counselor, Counselor do we need more detail than that? Well, it, the, if you were to find that uh, that there were health and safety violations, you have the power to order that they, that to direct uh, the uh, the tenant to not pay any rent. Um, so if you think there's enough evidence from what you've heard to make a determination, um, then, then uh, you could do that. If you have enough evidence to be concerned and you wanted to have it and have uh, the con hearing continue to have uh, someone from the health department or, uh, or building department to do an inspection to see if there are any violations, uh, then you'd have evidence of the record that would be more certain that there's a code violation. I mean, there, there for example, we haven't heard a specific section of the code that, that there's been a violation on. So I would be uncomfortable with you making a determination that in fact, there is a violation of health and safety regulations in order to order the tenant to suspend rent payments, but you could keep the hearing open to get more information on that point. How about if I amended my motion to uh, ask to include uh, a strong concern based on testimony that there are health and safety violations and request an inspection by the building department. Well, that my, sounds good to me. The so, mold issue is a significant issue, I think, in itself. Well, well, do you want to set the number now, um, and or um, you know, you. You could make a determination based on what you heard tonight. Uh, as of now, the, the 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 rent, fair rent, should be X, whatever that be, ten thirty, twelve hundred, whatever, um, so that we know what's happening over the course of the next month. But keep your hearing open to have it inspected because you're not going to have another opportunity if you close the proceed. You're right. It, the pub, the public hearing has has closed, but the proceeding hasn't ended tonight. Um, the you could there's nothing that would stop you from um, from reopening the hearing to um, allow to continue it for a month to in, to receive more evidence regarding safety violations if that if that's something um, that you want to hear more evidence on let me. I think that's where Lindsay was going concerned about any rental change, trying to have an inspection done. Then he was saying, yeah. if there are safety violations, you don't pay any rent. Well, you know, that, that's, a, that's a good point. The, the, I think you could, you're, it's not within your, your legal authority to require it, um, but you certainly can, um, you know, the, the, the interim town manager could take the information to uh, the, Build the uh, public health department uh, to do an inspection and there could be a new complaint. Uh, so if the inspection comes and says that there is a violation, then Mr. Ione could make the complaint that he should be suspended, suspended from having to pay any rent uh, from, for that period of time. And then you could make that determination. But as of, as of right now, based on the evidence that you have, you set what you believe the fair rent should be Mr. Ione has that ability to, to, uh, to trigger another remedy by getting someone in to do that kind of inspection. Uh, but that, that's, that's an alternative that, that's available so that you don't have so, to- keep... all right. Let's assume that we set a rent, fair rent for him now, mm -hmm. and then somehow we get the public safety people in there and they find violations. Will he then get back the rent he's been paying while waiting for the public, you know, safe, whatever they're called, to come in and check it out. Or 
Congress? No, I don't think so. I, I think it, it, the language of the, the statutes in, in your code says if during the hearing that you discover a violation, it can order the tenant to suspend rent payments uh, to correct. So I don't- yeah, But you have to get the violation found first. Right, and I don't think you can go backwards and say you got, you, they, they have to give money back to, to the tenant. But if based on what you've heard, you, you can you set what you think is, is a number um, to address uh, Commissioner Jones concern, if there is a legitimate code violation, uh, then that could immediately trigger another complaint. And then that, that, that evidence would, would support suspending uh, that. Now, oh, okay. you All also right. have heard though, you, you've heard, you know, the, the, this, this you know, property manager said he's going to be more um, proactive, communicative, communicative, proactive, et cetera. So, so my expectation from what he testified tonight and, and probably yours is that if an inspector came in and said that there is a code violation, that the landlord will promptly address that. So it might not even require a complaint to you to suspend rent because it'll be addressed very quickly. But, but okay. yeah, All right. looking, All right. guessing what might happen. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so if I withdrew my motion and just suggested or made a motion that the rent would continue at $1,100 a month, we give them 30 days and leave the hearing open with a uh, um, inspection being done, to see if there are any health, safety, and code violations? Would that have merit? Well, I, I think as we're talking it through, um, I, I think the, the property manager could hear loud and clear or should that if you know things are addressed in the place that uh, members of your commission would find that the rent should be higher. If under these circumstances, you have reason to believe that there are serious problems with the livability of this unit and you simply just set it at, a, at that number and you just set it you, you don't ask for 30 days you just set it uh, the landlord in ch making changes resolving things would have a reason to then increase the rent so you're setting it under these current circumstances the current uh, landlord comes in and makes a number of improvements and talks to Mr. Ione and says okay under these circumstances now we're going to raise it now, if we went right to 1400 and a lot of these things are still problematic, uh, another another appeal could be filed and then you'll convene another hearing. So rather than continue this one, perhaps you just set the number based on the evidence that you hear tonight and they can work together. Improvements could be made. They can hopefully work out an increase that that works, maybe a, a period of time, of way, who knows? They, they, there's all kinds of options that they have between the two of them. And, and hopefully there's better communication now than there was. So it, I think that may, may be wise, Commissioner, just set the number at that um, with, the, with the, uh, uh, the landlord hearing loud and clear that if he may, they make some improvements, they can reasonably reasonably increase the rate subject to Mr. Ryan's ability to file another complaint and come back before you and hear new information. And I'll withdraw, I'll withdraw that other motion and make a motion that the rent be 1100 a month for, because of the conditions of the existing unit that Mr. Zayeb is living in. And what about the inspection? I think that should go in there too. Well, Mr. Ayub, can the, 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 the interim town manager, you don't really have the power and regulations to require that, but I think the interim town manager as well as Mr. Ayub have heard that uh, that an inspection is probably a good idea. Um, so They're that already can... part of the record. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's my motion. Okay. And this is for a, a term limit of one month, right? No, it's just yeah. you'll set it, and that's what you find it to be fair, because that's really what you have right now. Is you've heard the circumstances of what it's in, so you set it at eleven hundred, and it'll. It, it will stay that way into these circumstances. The landlord could take an appeal from that. But what the landlord could also do is work with Mr. Ion, make some improvements and increase the amount, a reasonable amount, um, and they work something out. And if they can't work something out in the landlord, the landlord has to, has to uh, follow your, 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 uh, your determination of what fair is right now. And if the circumstances in the building haven't changed, um, then that would be very problematic for the landlord uh, to start charging. And of course, if they ignore your order, then, then there's a, we have a legal remedy for us. So 
I don't think you can set a time because they might make an arrangement that results in the complete rehabilitation of the place in two months. Uh, and so I, I think you should just set it for the circumstances it's in right now okay. and let them okay. work it out going forward with, with the possibility of another appeal coming or another complaint coming. Excellent. I'll stick with my All motion. Right, so 1100 you. on the floor. Anybody going to second that? I'll second that. Susan? Yep, I second that. I still oh, I want to be... make sure Bonnie then said, you know, somebody tells that he wants it checked out for safety, but that's not part of the motion. I, I know that. I will follow through on that definitely. Oh, okay. Okay, Thank so, so Chair, uh, Chair uh, McAdams, if you could just do the roll call of persons who are in favor of the motion that's that's been made and seconded that the current rent be set at eleven hundred dollars. Okay, um, Anthony Homicki. Yes. Susan Grady. Yes. Lindsay Jones. Yes. Diane McAdams. Yes. So that ends our hearing then. We're all. Based on your determination then, the Mr. Ione would owe uh, a, a small amount to the landlord of an increase from uh, 1,030 that uh, paid to the 1,100. But that would, be, that would be one consequence of that. And then again, as we just talked, hopefully the, uh, that he and the landlord will work together in terms of making the uh, necessary improvements for a reasonable increase above that amount. Is there any way to, to request that that be waived? That what be waived? The the past rent that he would owe if we increased to eleven hundred. Well, no, well, all he owes is seven seventy dollars now, uh, because he had did pay ten uh, one thousand thirty dollars. So based on the determination of eleven hundred, then then he only owes seven going backwards. He only owe, he'd only owe seventy dollars, and then as of February one, he'll owe eleven hundred dollars, and then from that point right. forward. Will all depend on how they work together and get get it in better condition. Okay, just seventy dollars is a lot for for people sometimes. Okay, so um, is everybody? So is our meeting adjourned? Yep, the mission is over. Okay, so then I I'll, I'll make a motion to adjourn at seven thirty four. Anybody want to second that? Second. Excellent. Um, I'm in favor of that. Diane McAdams. Susan? Do you do a roll yes. call? And yeah, ahead. we're doing a roll call. Diane McAdams yes. in favor of that. <laughs> yes. And Who's you yes? Yes. You have to say your name. Susan Grady. Yes. All right. Lindsay Jones. Yes. All right. All right. I, and so then Bonnie will send out the letters. Okay. I will. Thank you all very much. Appreciate good, your time. Good, good luck to all. Thank you. And, and now, Tony, we've nice got to another meet you all on face here. <laughs> Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Bye -bye. All right. Thank you for your time. My pleasure.